In this video, we begin a new chapter. This new chapter is on hypothesis testing and we begin by defining what is hypothesis testing. Think of hypothesis testing to be a procedure or let's say a technique in which we gain information, let's say from a sample of data to verify if a certain assumption about a population parameter is to be supported or rejected okay now i will try and explain what is hypothesis testing by let's say picking up a very simple example let's assume that you are let's say in charge of a company that is into this business of manufacturing led bulbs okay now when you package these bulbs then on the packaging let's say you claim that the bulb that you are selling to a customer will last for let's say an average 10,000 hours okay now that's a claim that you are making based on let's say some testing that you have done before you sold your first bulb okay now let's assume that somebody within your company or maybe let's say outside your company has reported to you that this number that you are printing on your packaging this average life of 10,000 hours is not really correct okay so therefore what you believe is that for the entire population of bulbs that you have let's say already manufactured and sold this number of 10,000 is indeed correct. You firmly believe that. But this, this person or this organization is now trying to tell you that that number of 10,000 is not correct. Okay. And therefore, you want to somehow verify if this claim which this organization or person is making is correct or not. Okay. Now, to test this claim using statistics, using let's say data, we follow this procedure which we refer to as hypothesis testing. What we will do is that we will, let's say, describe this procedure as a five-step process that you can follow diligently and then in the end make this final conclusion or draw this final conclusion if this claim that you are now hearing is correct or not. Okay. Now, Step one of this procedure is to formulate or set up the hypothesis that is to be tested. In this, I, our focus is usually on a population parameter. In this case, in our simple case study, this population parameter is the average life of the LED bulb that you are manufacturing. Okay. Now, in general, let us call this population parameter that we are after to be let's say theta okay it can be anything actually i'm just referring to it as theta and when i try and set up the hypothesis i set it up as actually two hypotheses okay first of these is what we refer to as the null hypothesis so null hypothesis let me define it first null hypothesis is basically the status quo Okay, it's the assumption about the parameter theta that needs to be maintained if there is no ample evidence against it. So, for example, in our simple case study, this assumption that theta, the average life of a bulb, is equal to 10,000 is the null hypothesis. Okay, it's the assumption which you want to maintain if there is no strong evidence against it. It's your status quo, okay? Now, another way to put this definition is that it is a sustained belief about the parameter if countering evidence is not really, let's say, available against your belief, okay? Then, in terms of recognizing the null hypothesis, mathematically speaking, remember that it is that hypothesis which contains the equality sign. Now, how do you mathematically write the null hypothesis? You write it as actually H0. So that is how you would label this null hypothesis, H0. 
and via this hypothesis you make this statement that your population parameter let's call it theta in our generic case is equal to some hypothesized value let's call it theta naught so in our simple case study we will say that the average life of bulbs that we manufacture is equal to 10,000 that's my null hypothesis okay then there is one more hypothesis that we need to formulate and that is the alternate hypothesis let's try and let's say define it first think of the alternate hypothesis to be the challenger hypothesis remember there was somebody who came and claimed that the average life is not 10,000 that means he is challenging our belief that the bulbs that we manufacture indeed do last till an average of 10,000 hours so this challenger hypothesis which we refer to as the alternate hypothesis is upheld if strong evidence is indeed obtained against the null hypothesis okay I'm not really saying that if null is kind of disproved then we have proved the alternate so statistics remember cannot really prove anything based on data what it just means is that we via this procedure would collect enough information to let's say reject the null if possible if the evidence is strong enough and uphold the alternate okay maybe going forward invest more resources to study the alternate we haven't really proved the alternate okay now this alternate hypothesis I can also define it as some hypothesis that helps me with those values of the population parameter that we are focusing on in our case theta where the null should be rejected so the alternate as we will proceed forward you will see will give you the guidance that will tell you when and why the null is to be rejected okay it's the alternate that gives you that guidance okay then many a times what people believe the alternate to be is the complement of the null and here when I refer to complement I am talking about complement as we studied in the case of sets remember I am saying that if the null hypothesis is let's say my belief that theta is equal to theta naught for example then the alternate hypothesis would basically then state that theta is any value but not theta naught that means the complement of this set which contains a single value theta naught so therefore in the most basic kind of case you will define the null and the alternate to be like mutually exclusive both cannot be true together if one is true the other one is false and vice versa so therefore if I define my null to be h naught such that you know theta is equal to theta naught I will define my alternate I label the alternate as either h1 or I can label it as h a a means alternate I will define it to be theta not equal to theta naught okay so this is like a complement of that set which contains a single value theta naught okay now the way I have defined my null and my alternate I just told you both of them cannot be true simultaneously okay now what if I were to define my alternate slightly differently what is the need for that now first comes first the way I have defined my alternate is what we referred to as a two-sided hypothesis test why is it called two-sided because the alternate is trying to just prove that theta is not equal to theta naught right evidence against the null will be strong if either the theta that you observe let's say from a sample of data is too high compared to theta naught or it is too low compared to theta naught that means I'm talking about two sides deviation on two sides okay so this 
theta not equal to theta not kind of hy alternate hypothesis is a two-sided alternate hypothesis. If theta is too big compared to theta not, again it is strong evidence against the null. If theta is too small compared to theta not, again it is strong evidence against the null. That's why it's called two-sided. Okay. Now I'm saying, do we really need two-sided always? Because two-sided, all it does is that it proves that theta is different from theta naught. Stop believing that theta is equal to theta naught. It is different from theta naught. That is what this alternate hypothesis is trying to prove. Okay. Now, I am saying let's move away from two-sided and think about one-sided. And I am asking you this question, do we need a one-sided alternate hypothesis okay before I actually tell you what this one-sided is useful for let me quickly tell you how does a one-sided look like so I can define a one-sided alternate which looks something like this H a is theta is greater than theta naught so not really saying theta not equal to theta naught I'm saying theta is greater than theta naught okay this kind of a one-sided alternate hypothesis is what we refer to as upper or right tailed okay it will become clearer as you move forward so greater than is referred to as upper slash right tailed similarly i can define my alternate as theta less than theta naught this you can guess is referred to as lower one-sided also referred to as left tailed okay now if this is my alternate you can quickly check that I don't really have now this this condition that either the null is true or the alternate is true because for example if I were to let's say stick with this as my alternate and what if theta comes out to be less than theta naught now theta less than theta naught is neither null nor it is alternate okay that means if we define one-sided the way we have defined just now you might have values of theta for which neither the null is true nor the alternate is true but that doesn't affect whatever follows in this chapter I'm just highlighting this fact to you that this kind of definition of the hypothesis may involve a scenario in which neither the null nor the the alternate is true okay now why would we want a one-sided because the negative consequences of deviation from of deviations in one side are more severe than deviations on the other side okay why connect with let's say our LED bulb example okay if based on your studies that you are about to do let's say to to let's say prove or refute this claim which somebody is making if let's say from that study what came out is that indeed the average life of the bulb is not 10,000 what came out is that the average life of a bulb is actually greater than 10,000 is it a source of worry for you actually no if it's greater than 10,000 then actually it's, it's a good thing for you you as a manufacturer of these LED bulbs if this average life comes out to be significantly less than 10,000 then it's a big worry for you right so therefore as far as you the manufacturer is concerned the consequences of deviations from that number of 10,000 on the left hand side are more severe as compared to deviations on the right hand side and therefore if you really want to do this study to check what is the average life of the bulbs that you manufacture then this kind of a left or a lower one-sided hypothesis would be more appropriate for your case okay so the last point in the favor of one-sided is that if you use one-sided alternate hypothesis then a higher chance then actually I'm saying one-sided gives you a higher chance of rejecting a null hypothesis if indeed it is false.
okay so this higher chance it happens when the true parameter value is in the range which is covered by the alternate hypothesis that you have defined all i am trying to say is that one sided alternate gives you a more powerful hypothesis test as compared to a two sided alternate okay now what is the power of the test will become clearer as we move forward as of now just remember this as let's say uh, a reason that a one sided test is more attractive as compared to a two sided okay so this opening video was about step 1 of hypothesis testing it's about what is null what is alternate why the alternate can be a two sided alternate and in some cases a one sided alternate